Good evening and welcome to the Speaker MC Show. Yes, the Speaker MC Show where it's all about relationships. Today we are talking about the green side is big food. Yes, the green side, profit versus health. Which one is more important? And we have two phenomenal guests this evening that we would love to introduce you to and wait till you hear about their bios. But if you're new to the show, <laughs> this is what you can expect this evening. We will introduce the show, give you a little bit of an overview, then we'll take a little break, we'll come back, say hello to our guests, and then we'll start our discussion. And then we'll take another little break, then you'll hear more about our guests. They'll have like five minutes to talk about themselves, why they got into the business that they're in, and what kind of gifts they brought for you. Because you know, my love language is gifting. And that's what I promote on this show, gifting. So they're going to bring some gifts for you, the audience, so that they will lead a path back to them and build that relationship with you. Because, you know, after all, the Speaker MC show, we're all about relationships. And then we're going to say bye-bye until next time. So that's what you can expect this evening. 60 minutes of some real good information. So here is the show. We are talking about the green side, big business, the food industry. Are we eating ourselves sick or healthy? And the food industry, don't get me wrong, it's a $1 trillion industry. Yeah, but the problem now is that food companies, they don't have any control over their brand, their brand images, or their reputation. And why is that? Well, there are 10 companies that actually control the entire food industry. And six of them are Nestle, PepsiCo, Kellogg's, Mondelez, Coca-Cola, and Unilever. And of course, you have some others. <coughs> there's Danone, and there's Mars, and there's also Wrigley, just to name a few. Now, the issue that we are in contention with tonight is whether it's profit, or it's about our health. And that power has been usurped by a lot of the influences in the market, such as public health activists, celebrity nutritionists, politicians, food bloggers, all those people who they, they have their own agendas. So they usually go the stance of profit as opposed to what's healthy for us, the consumer. And 72% of Americans tend to have this sentiment. At least that's what's reported in the National Marketing Institute. Well, let's talk about the Speaker MC show because those are the subject matters that we're going to deal with tonight on our show. And if this is your first time on the Speaker MC show, what you can expect tonight is 60 minutes of engaging interactive conversation where we talk about how we relate to ourselves, how we relate to each other, and how we relate to our environment. And today, it's focused on our environment, you know? And our intention is threefold. For you, the audience, our intention is to empower and enlighten you about creating harmonious environments and boosting your self-confidence. And for our guests, we provide a platform and an opportunity for them to share their message. And for everyone, we just want everyone to have fun. <laughs> so right now, we're just gonna take a slight little break and it's gonna be a word from our sponsors. Now here's a word from our sponsor. Too much of this or this? When was the last time you had this or this? Been a while. If you're in the New York area, join us for champagne and chocolate conversations. It's at a comfy, convenient location where you learn three things you can do daily to have more energy for your nighttime activities. Ah, uh, no nightclub, no, no kitty chatter. 
Hearts Adult Conversations. Usually it's at the last Saturday between 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern. If you are a SWELL member, SWELL members enter with full access pass. If you're a guest, that means you're not a SWELL member, you'll enter for a fee of $27. Bring a plus one, pay a plus $7. <laughs> Bring a plus one for plus seven, that's right. And it's usually, like I said, the last Saturday between seven to 9 p.m. Join our meetup group for the details, http bit.ly forward slash join meetup group. That's bit.ly join meetup group. You have the details there. You'll find out when and where we'll be meeting. See you then for some champagne and chocolate conversations. Well, welcome back to the Speaker MC Show. I hope you enjoyed our little commercial break. <laughs> now let us say hello to our guests. Our guests this evening, they are phenomenal. Can, did I say phenomenal? Phenomenal. That's right. First of all, this gentleman, I have known this gentleman for a few years. He and I share the same speakers bureau. And when I tell you he is like fearless and he is fierce, you want to get connected with this young man. This is Mr. Fox Bayer. And Fox is in the Chatham, New Jersey area. And he is a speaker and he is also a creative writer. I think Fox is writing a book. Aren't you, Fox? I think so. Yes, let me unmute him. But Fox is a speaker, author, teacher, coach, and he enjoys relaying his experiences of living with cerebral palsy through poetry. When I tell you this young man is fabulous and fearless, you best believe me. And he has brought his gift, his book of poetry. Yes. So you got to get it. It is really, really good reading. Hi, Fox. Say hello to everyone. Hello, Marcia. Hello, everybody. Um, <laughs> I'm very happy to be on today and share my experiences. Um, as Marcia said, I am uh, a writer, creative writer, and a poet, uh, mostly of motivational poetry. And I, I think this poem that I'll recite to you uh, has a lot to do with today's topic. And it's called Skinny Fat Dude. Yes, yes. Go ahead. My stomach is a bottomless pit. I used to say, sure, I'll eat that. I don't care about it. In spite of all this food and beer, sometimes I turn sideways and I disappear. But then, at times, I lift my shirt and I'm attacked by the empty side of my one-pack. Sometimes my muscles are like wet newspaper. When I flex, all the girls say is, see you later. I'm trying not to be, Marcia, a skinny, fat dude. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. A skinny, fat dude. <laughs> we all got to be careful. What's on the outside, outside might not be on the inside, you know. Uh well, let's work from the inside out. Why don't we do that? <laughs> let's do that. Let's do that. <laughs> welcome to the Speaker MC Show, Fox. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So happy and honored that you are here with us this evening. <laughs> thank you for having me. It's, it's, it's going to be a blast. It always is with you, Marcia. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And our next guest seems to be having some technical issues. Not sure what's going on, but she was on earlier and all of a sudden she got booted out. I'm not sure what's going on. But anyway, I'll introduce her. Hopefully she'll be able to check back in before <laughs> the show ends. <laughs> and our next guest is Miss Margaret Babb. And Margaret <clears throat> is the CEO of NatureSure, which is a personal care products company that she has started. And her area of expertise is holistic lifestyle. Because for 35 years, she had an interest in the health awareness, 
especially eating habits. And more recently, she's expanded her interest to include personal care products. And Margaret, when I said that Margaret is like the chemist behind this whole thing, she makes soaps and lotions and deodorants. She makes all that stuff. So, you know, Dwayne Reed and Walgreens don't need to see her unless they're going to put her products on the shelf. So when she comes back, I will definitely have her say hello to everyone. And in the event that you're wondering, well, who is that woman in the hat? Well, that's me. I am your host for the evening. My name is Marcia Chambers, AKA Speaker MC. And I am a sexual wellness consultant and a speaker. And, and my expertise is working with women who are lonely in their relationship. So I help them to go from sexless to steamy. And how do I do that? Well, I created this company called Swell for Women. Why? Because I noticed that people were exchanging DNA and they weren't asking the right questions. Meanwhile, we're on the highway and they're cutting us off or we're calling a company for some customer service and they're giving us really raggedy customer service. That's because they ain't get none, okay? <laughs> <laughs> And my mission is to reduce the world's divorce rate by 50%. And that's the reason why I created Swell. And how do I share my message? My message is about women, women having better sex and better intimacy to give themselves permission to be sensual and sexual, just so that they can lead empowered lives. And I share that through a lot of portals, Swell Happy Hour, Swell Playroom, The Bushes Swelling Show, they all concentrate on shifting how we think about sex and sexuality. And this show, The Speaker MC Show, which is all about relationships, we explore how we relate to ourselves, to each other, and to our environment. So it's still in the arena of relationships, but that's what I do. I share my message because we got to Put an end to this. Oh, I don't talk about sex. Mm. <laughs> but tonight, our show topic is all about the green side of big food. Yeah, the food industry, the $1 trillion industry. Is it about profit or is it about our health? Well, what are they telling us? They're saying, yeah, we got to save the planet and we got to save the animals. Bullshit. Yeah, now they are growing meat in the lab. Did you know that? Lab-grown meat is coming whether you like it or not. That was the article that I found by Matt Simon written in February of this year. And they're coining it clean meat. Mm. Here's a website in the event that you want to read the entire article. But the blurb that I... I Ca uh, I captured here, it says, and his scientists here grew the meat in the lab from cells, incubating them with heat and feeding them nutrients. That article was actually speaking about foie gras, which is the goose liver. Yeah, they use it as a pate, you know, a spread. It's supposed to be a real shishi kind of food. But regardless, they're growing that in the lab. Yeah. And they're telling us, oh, yeah, that's clean meat. But is that what is making us so sick? A lot of people have been dying from diabetes. This is from, I forgot which source I got this, but it wasn't from the Diabetes Association because they are claiming that it's a lower amount. I found this article and it says that one in 11 people, one person in 11 is suffering from diabetes. One in 11. That means if you have 50 friends, trust and believe at least four of them have diabetes. And that is sad. That right there is sad. 3.7 million deaths are due to diabetes and high blood glucose. Yeah, everybody's injecting themselves, injecting themselves. 422 million adults currently have diabetes. And this is the stats from 2016. Yeah, so it must be higher by now. And not only that, heart disease, stroke by the numbers. I remember I used to go on a lot of walkathons, and every walkathon was about some kind of ailment or illness. Now I'm wondering, you know, they're bringing on all these illnesses because they're giving us clean meat. 
really? The stroke, which they say 80% of all strokes can be prevented, one in four strokes are in people who've had a previous strokes. And every 40 seconds, every 40 seconds, every 40 seconds, not 40 minutes, not 40 hours, not 40 days, every 40 seconds, someone has a stroke. Let that resonate. What's causing all this? I mean, people are getting sick and sicker and sicker by the day. Now, is that because we are spraying the food with this herbicide from Monsanto, Monsanto, uh, which is called glyph glyphosate, glyphosate. I always get caught up with that word, glyphosate. Yeah, it's a herbicide and it's made by humans. It's undetectable. It's hard to avoid because it's generated by big agriculture. 80%, 80% of the foods that are made in these labs or the genetically modified foods, with our, which are the GM foods, those crops are grown globally and engineered to tolerate glyphosate. Let that resonate. Genetically modified foods, those are, according to the Journal of Organic Systems, right? Autism, now autism. I don't know if you've heard of a rise of autistic children in the last, say, 10 years. Well, in 2010, look at the scale. From 1994, there were below 5,000 six-year-olds who had autism. Now it's above 30,000, and this is 2010. So you know the number is drastically higher than that. And is this because of these genetically modified or genetically engineered crops? Is that what it is? Well, they're saying that it's linked to at least 22 diseases, the correlation with genetically modified and 22 diseases as the cause. Let that sink in, yeah. And how common are GMOs? Well, 93% of the soy are genetically modified food. 93% of cotton, genetically modified. 86% of corn. And you know, my mother loves corn. I have to tell her to stop eating corn. 86% of the corn is, that's grown in the US, they are genetically modified. And this was a study done by the USDA in 2009. I'm pretty sure these numbers are much higher. This is nine years later. So what's the solution? What is the solution? Can we take political action? Can we vote it out? Or do, do we just buy organic or look for the non-GMO seal, you know, that green and white seal? Or do we just avoid the crops that are common to being GMO? Are these, are these viable solutions? We're gonna discuss that tonight. But there are eight foods which are common genetically modified foods. Genetically modified food. GMO foods, corn, soybeans, canola, cottonseed, sugar beets. I love beets. Hawaiian papaya, I love papaya and a small amount of zucchini and squash. Look at this chart. Look at this chart. These are foods that we're thinking, oh, it's healthy. This is healthy for you. Really? Is it? Things that make you go, hmm. So we're going to discuss what are they really feeding us and what are they telling us? And then what is the impact on us? And how can we do better? So those are the topics that we're gonna to discuss tonight. And I'm not sure where Margaret is at this point, but Margaret, I hope that you are somewhere close by because we need you, darling. <laughs> so welcome to the show. Fox, let me just largen the screen a little bit here. And thank you so much for being on the show tonight. Thank you for having me. Thank you. <clears throat> now, what do you think about the 
genetically modified foods. I mean, it's big business. As I said, it's a trillion dollar industry. And I know I'm in the sex industry and that's a trillion dollar industry. But the foods are like crazy off the charts. What do you think about the glyphosate? The glyphosate and it's affecting their bottom line, basically. What, what, I'm, what I'm reading through what you're saying, and a lot of this, um, you're, you're enlightening me about, about a lot of this, but what I'm reading from what you're saying is that according to the her current health craze and, and the foods that are nowadays super foods, I think companies see that and try to make as much of it as they can and therefore give it the chemicals that it needs to produce a large amount. And when you give it those chemicals, those are the kinds of foods that make you sick. And I would think myself, uh, first and foremost, before you can get all this information about what foods have the, the, the bad chemicals in them, you need to think about your relationship to food. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, and think about what your body needs. And you know, taking notes before we, we got on, I had um, writ, uh, wrote, uh, read this book called The Passion Belief Method by Meg Tull. And Meg is part of the uh, PSA, as you, you and I are. And, uh -huh. In the book, she gives advice about sort of just how to, to, to live your life in a very efficient manner. Um, one thing is with your wallet, keep it neat. Um, <laughs> keep the wallet neat and, and thin um, with you know, your, your highest bills to your lowest bills stacked up. But the thing about food she mentions is giving your body enough time to digest the food that you eat. Don't get so locked in on, oh, I've got to eat avocado, I've got to eat alfalfa. Uh, if you don't give your body time to digest the food that you eat, it's not going to, to uh, do the good that it's supposed to do. So before you drink what they sell on television in the papers, think about what your body needs first and how much of it um, that it needs and try to balance your diet out instead of, like you said, buying into what all the big companies are selling. Are saying, so if that information true. is just too much for you, stop for a minute, think about what your body needs, go to the appropriate person and say, you know, this is who I am, this is my size, what does my body need? And then you go from there and then you can start dissecting uh, what these big companies are selling and really narrow things down. So there is so much truth to what you said, because earlier this year I did, um, what is it? A 21 day cleanse. And I learned so much from doing that 21 day cleanse. I learned about charcoal, which I mean, I'm pretty sure a lot of people know about it, but I just didn't know about it because I wasn't using charcoal, charcoal to kind of eradicate the poisons from your body. So notwithstanding that, yeah, you have the Monsanto and the herbicides and all these foods that are addictive and foods that may not be good for you, but if you can have something that's like a, uh, an anti to whatever the poison is, so it's a poison, so this can clean it out, I was happy with that. That was number one. And also what you said about giving the food enough time to digest. Meanwhile, we learn that stuff, but do we pay attention to it? No, because at the end of the day, and I think that MSG and glu the, glut the, glutamines, the glutamines, they have these addictive properties. I think they call them excitotoxins or something. And when they have these in the foods, you just feel like, oh my God, I gotta eat, gotta eat, gotta eat, gotta eat, you know, mindlessly eating as opposed to eating something, letting it digest, and giving your body enough time to absorb whatever it is. So there's so much truth to what you're saying. But, but back to what they're telling us, you know, oh, this is good for you. Oh, this is clean. Oh, this is organic. How many of these places are actually organic? Because I, 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 my, the, the, my tax preparer, he used to be a health inspector. 
And he confided in me one time and he told me that you can buy an A rating. So a lot of these restaurants, they can just buy the A rating. So they're not really healthy. They're not really A rated. And he said, you can also buy the, or the, the food industry does not have any kind of curtailments or any kinds of um, uh, constraints to say, well, you can't call this organic. Well, what is organic? You know, so the simple fact that it doesn't really have a defined definition per se, you can say anything's organic. So that's the other thing again. For sure, for sure. You make a point. We need to read. We need to read the label to see what is on the, uh, uh, within the foods and always question what is popular. Mm -hmm. Because the bottom line is these companies are selling a product. Okay? They're selling a product. Happens to be food in this case, food, food and drink. But you've got to read the label and, and see what is actually in the food. And, and like I said, question what is popular. One of, one of, my, one of my best friends, um, he, he's told me for years, I'm really, really annoying. I don't have a lot of friends because of the simple reason that I'm always asking why, 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 mm -hmm. why. And that's what you're doing, Marcia. Mm -hmm. Always asking why. We have to question what is popular. The numbers don't lie. They like don't. You said in the beginning, I mean, you're going to know, what is it, what's the number, four out of how many? One out of 11 have One diabetes. 11. And every 40 seconds, someone's oh, dying of a stroke, having a stroke. The, the facts are the facts. Immediately when you said that about um, those who are diabetic, I can think of a high school gym teacher. I can think of my mother's cousin. Um, I mean, and I can think of a bunch of other friends who are diabetic. And, and everybody's, everybody that gets in from diabetes before their time. But these are people that contracted it in their 30s. Yeah. The, the, the facts are the facts. And, and, and we have to read, like you've been doing with your excellent presentation in the beginning. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, read the label to see what is in there. I mean, the, some of these items, they might come from car parts for crying out loud, who knows? I mean, I mean we, you can't put that stuff into your body and expect it. But wait a minute, you talk about car parts. You know that Pepsi, the thing that makes Pepsi and Coca-Cola is the same thing that can clean rust off your knives and rust off your, your kettle. There you go. Use that, and, <laughs> and people are consuming this with, 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 you know, no restraint. Like, oh, I just love my soda. What is it doing to your intestines? What is it doing to your insides? Mm -hmm. You know, that, it has to do with 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 it, with, a, with someone who's really sharp who creates a bliss point within the food. I forget where I I, I watched a, a a movie, um, and, uh, on on Netflix about a guy from Australia who set off to for 60 days to eat the recommended daily allowance of sugar uh, in foods within the US and how it changed its health, his health. It was unbelievable how his body um, just took a beating and it talked about a bliss point within the foods in the US, a man who discovered it, the, the exact amount of sugar you put in food that makes you want more. And wow. It's, it's, it's just amazing. And I, I wrote a bunch down, Marcia, of, because um, I, I told you in the beginning, skinny fat dude. Yeah. I'm, I have a, had an enormous sweet tooth, but eating, because I eat mindlessly, or I have eaten mm -hmm. mindlessly in, in the past, and there are times where I am just wiped out in front of the television, pissed off at myself, and thinking, Fox, you've got to change this. I watched a couple of documentaries. They're called uh, Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. Uh, I forget the man's first name is Joe, and I forget his last name, but I would recommend watching that. He ate mindlessly. At age 42, he was diabetic beyond belief. Uh, another good documentary is called Forks Over Knives. For, I think I heard about that one. Forks, Forks Over, Over Knives. Knives. Yeah. It really gets into the topic you're discussing. We need to... Analyze. I mean, I love to eat, but we need to analyze a bit more what we're putting into our body. We, 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 um, but, they, but, 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 you know, Fox, even though I, I agree with what you're saying, we got to analyze and we got to read the labels. But if they're saying to you that 
you got to eat more fruits, you got to eat more vegetables. And that's what they're modifying in the labs. I mean, for Christ's sake, they're going to modify meats and call it clean meat. Mm. This is this is the new trend. Oh, you got to eat clean. You got to eat clean. What the hell does that mean? That yeah. means I got to eat something that you prepare. I used to watch um, George Jetson. And I remember George oh, yeah. Jetson used to take those little pills and that was his breakfast. Is that what we're coming to? <laughs> right, right. Pop and pill. Heck. I mean, we have the flying cars that are coming. Dubai is presenting their, their first flying car. So I know that they're, they're coming to the States pretty soon. Maybe in the next, by 2020, we'll be flying into outer space. So I'm saying that, you know, futuristic is futuristic, but we still have to be cognizant and be mindful of what we are ingesting. Because at the end of the day, the insurance companies run, run America and so do the, um, the, well, yeah, the health insurance companies. They run America. Mm -hmm. Because the sicker they make you, the more money they make. And if they can keep the foods unhealthy, but call it healthy, well, how many people are actually going to sit there and read the label? You know, how many people are actually going to say, well, you know, this burger costs $2. I'm right. making like $20 an hour mm -hmm. and I have three kids that I have to support. So as opposed to buying a well-cooked meal that I have to spend like $50 or $70. I'd rather take the burger that I can get like four of them and only spend like $20, you know, that fast, quick, cheap. It's no <laughs> question. They're putting the power play on us. There's no question about it. There's no question about it. Absolutely. Yeah. So what can we do about it? What, what now in our, how can we regain our power? And, and do something to cause an impact. And maybe, not, maybe not in the whole world, but you know, the simple fact that you start with you, it will ripple out elsewhere, just like everything. You just start small and let it ripple out. What can you suggest besides reading the labels? Because like I said, they're, they're pulling the okie doke Beets, soy, I can't tell you how many times they say, oh, yeah, soy is good for you and milk is good for you. Bullshit. Bullshit. You know, soy gives women a lot of fibroids. And then they say, oh, well, we don't know where fibroids come from. Well, yeah, soy, you know. So what can you suggest that we can do as individuals to impact change just in our household besides going out there and growing <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I was I was going to say before before uh, when, when you were speaking before I, we're both on Facebook and um, Tom Brady, quarterback of the New England Patriots, uh, he's got a little I forget what the, the, the his little um, movie show is on Facebook, but he had like five episodes. Um, that man he he has a garden in his front yard and mm -hmm. he doesn't eat anything fruits and vegetables um, if they're not from that garden. Uh, it's, Marcy, this is, this is tough. This is tough because where are we getting our foods? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. we, we do have to take a stand in some way. I mean, people are, I don't know if I have an answer, but people are dying um, uh, way before their time. And it's not about guilt or regret. It's about the food that they put in their body. Mm -hmm. uh, but in, it, things like this that make people aware of what they're eating, I think just having this conversation and getting it around, that's how we're taking a stand because we know if, if we're not affected by it, loved ones are. I mean, uh -huh. you, you really have me at lockjaw here because you're right. People, <laughs> aren't, people, not everybody's going to read the label. I mean, they're yeah. going to say, I'm hungry, I'm going to eat. Um, but, you know. And then, and, then, and then not only that, not only that, they also trust places like, Whole Foods, and uh, what's the other one called? Um, Tom, Joe, Trader Joe. Trader Joe's. Trader yeah. Joe's, Whole Foods, the Costco's, you know, thinking that, oh, well, I'm getting organic stuff from there, and, and they may not be. Right, right. <laughs> I can be a Trader Joe story. I was all excited to go there one day, and it's, it's 
It's what they're selling. This parking lot, Marcia, was a circus. I almost got like 16 accidents, and I'm thinking I'm going to get, you know, a really nice, a really nice salad with a bunch of bunch of greens or whatever on it. And all I really got was a bunch of spinach and lettuce. And I thought oh, wow. I almost got in four accidents, and I got spinach and lettuce, and that was it. And it didn't really do anything for me. So it makes you think, what are they selling? I, you know, I, it's tough. I think p- making people aware that that um like you said organic is not necessarily organic and what is organic anyway exactly. i mean um you need to question that if you can't define it and you don't know what it is why are you eating it uh, right why are you and, buying it and paying a lot of money for it don't forget money. that they charge you yeah. like 200 percent because it says organic mm-hmm. unbelievable i mean yeah. You know, I don't know. We just need to be, become more and more aware every single day about what we're putting into our body. Mm-hmm. And even if, it's, even if it's little by little. I, I, I guess not to do it. It's your show. But, I mean, you're somebody who told me you, you went on a cleanse. How? Once you read all of those articles, what did you do? <laughs> well, my, my solace, like I said to you, is the charcoal. Yeah, because yeah. from reading that the charcoal actually eradicates everything. The only the only drawback is that you have to consume that every day. Okay. I mean, it, it gets kind of messy, but when you think of the the big picture, you know, it's it's cleaning you out, it's cleaning your insides, it's it's detoxifying you, it's it's getting rid of whatever parasites that could have been procured because or, or incubated because of all these herbicides and whatever it is that they're spraying our foods with. And they're making tomatoes. Now, I remember years ago, I had heard that they were making tomatoes and grapes in the lab. And you know, you you hear it and you're like, ah, oh, scuff it off. But then when you see it appear in the supermarket, seedless grapes, seedless tomatoes. I'm sorry, seedless? Right, exactly, that tells you right away. Makes it. Yeah. If it grows from a seed, how, how can it not have any seeds in it? Exactly, exactly. And now what's disturbing to me, I love papaya. Now they're making papaya in the lab? Oh my God, so what am I gonna eat? Even fish, you're saying, well, chicken. Chicken and I had a divorce because whenever I eat chicken, I just can't breathe anymore because it just builds up so much mucus that I can no longer breathe. Okay. So to me, me and chicken don't have a relationship. We're done. Uh, we're done. So I, I tend to go to maybe turkey or fish. Even the fish, they're farm raising these fish with all these antibiotics and all these toxins. You know, like what the hell am I supposed to eat? That's the question. <laughs> That's the question. Speaking of, of tomatoes, I don't, I mean, I was never a fan. I always thought if you if you mixed something with that you didn't like with something that you liked, you'd be okay. Um, but even with tomatoes, I wouldn't. And then I heard a story of my friend's father-in-law getting diverticulitis from a tomato. And I, I and I, since then I've I've uh, steered clear of tomatoes. Like you divorced from chicken, I have divorced from tomatoes. <laughs> oh my gosh! And tomatoes are supposed to be really good, especially for men for their their lingam and you know their their sexual constitution. That's uh, not helping me. <laughs> hey, the well has been dry. <laughs> there we go. We got, we got on your topic, sex. So, yep. Thanks a lot, tomatoes. I've been swimming and missing for a while. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that is too funny. Well. Yeah. We're, we're almost at it. I can't believe that, you know, the time just went like that. Did, and did, Margaret texted me and said that something was still going on with uh, the feed on her end. So I guess she won't be joining us. But what I can do is open up the floor. And I know we have a few people out there. Is anyone ready to engage in this conversation about big foods and have a talk with, with Fox? But before we even do that, Fox, let, let's share with the audience a little bit more about you and 
how do you get into being the poetic speaker that you are? And yeah, just talk a little bit about you and then we'll open up the floor. Let's do that. Yeah, thanks Marcia. <laughs> Hello everybody, I'm, I'm Fox Byer and like uh, Marcia said, teacher, author, speaker, coach. And along about 2014, uh, a friend of mine um, was also a baseball coach. We were riding home from the park one night. He said, uh, you know what, we should write a song. And because we always listen to music together. And I, I wrote a song that ended up being a poem, wrote a bunch more. And January of 2015, I became an author for the first time. I wrote a book of inspiring, motivational, and personal poetry called Letter Kindling. Um, that's your, your gift. Um, if you would like a copy, just email me off my website, which is foxbuyer.com. That's F-O-X-B-E-Y-E-R.com. Just shoot me a line off the, off the homepage. And I would be glad to send you a copy free of charge. I'm just a guy that over the last three, four years have got, has gone around speaking about my experiences growing up, working, and living with cerebral palsy, and I do it while interjecting some poetry, and a lot of it is from this book. But um, that's who I am, that's what I do, and I hope, I hope in some small way, shape, or form, I gave you some relevant and appropriate information and in, my insight on um, how we can better take care of our bodies. And I'm, I'm a skinny guy, but that's not, not to say that um, I've always taken care of my body the way that I should. So let's not always drink what they're selling. Let's try to make better choices. And I think this is one of the ways we can do it uh, through Marcia's platform, become more aware of what we put in our bodies because you do or you don't, you have one life, sometimes you decide. What happens when life's events don't make sense and everything is on the contrary? On, on the schedule, itinerary, dive in and swim. It's time to find out what lies within because when you're dealt a second right hand, people, it comes down to the character of the man. Marcia, thank you for the platform. Oh, wow. That is awesome. That is awesome. You didn't tell them that you do a podcast, Scott. Oh, oh I, do, I, do, I do do a podcast. Marcia was on. It's called What's Your Inspiration? Mm -hmm. and Marcia knows. We, we, we talk about what makes the guest them. Mm -hmm. What has inspired them to become the person that they have? So it's a, a very engaging, I enjoy it very much, a fun 30-minute conversation it's, it's called What's Your Inspiration? If you go to my website, www.foxbeyer.com, you'll see uh, episodes from the podcast and be able to get to every episode of the podcast, either on Podbean, YouTube, or iTunes. It's called, what, it's called What's Your Inspiration? inspiration. I will share his information toward the end of the show as well. But right now I wanna open up the floor and I know we have a few people online and I just wanted to make sure that we give our audience some kind of platform to interact, to share a comment, give their views, ask a question on our topic here tonight. And remember our topic here tonight is about big food the big food industry, the green side of food. Is it for profit or is it for our health? What the hell are they telling us? What the hell are they feeding us? They're making meat in the lab for Christ's sake. So if anyone wants to open up the floor and have a conversation, I'm taking you off mute. I'm taking a lot of people off mute. You're unmuted. So if you want to say a few words, just raise your hands and... Does anyone want to say a few words? Ask a question? Hello? Yes, yes. There we go. Yes. And good evening. Good evening. <laughs> good, e and good evening to you. Great show. Great show. Thank you. Thank you. So, concerns. I mean, since we are dealing with all of these uh <laughs> modified foods and as much as you try to eat healthy would you say that incorporating 
in spices that can help to, I don't know, maybe somehow cut some of these pesticides in the body using spices like turmeric and ginger, even aloe vera. Um, I mean, trying your best to, to eat as healthy as you can. Will some of these spices and herbs help to protect the body of some sort? Even though the spices and stuff are grown in soil, of course, that has mm -hmm. been tampered with. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's your question? Yes. Well, the incorporation of spices in one's diet help to somewhat circumvent some of the poisons in the food that we ingest. Well, you know, from my short span <laughs> with the food industry, I would assume that any, any kind of proactive stance, whether it's additional spices or, yeah, turmeric and ginger, Whatever you can do, like I said, I am going to be now a, a great proponent of charcoal because I found that that is going to be like my anti, what they call that thing. I, I'm having such a brain fart with this. Antioxidant? Um, at, no, not antioxidant. It's like the remedy for, you know, you have something that's hurtful. This is the anti to that. This is my remedy to that. So if, if that's your remedy, you know, I say go for it. But what, what surprised me with the food industry is how many things that they are now cloning and making in the lab under the guise of clean food. So at what point are we going to say, well, is turmeric really turmeric, you know? Is ginger really ginger? That's 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 the big question for me. It, what's real and what's fake? So well, I guess to a certain extent, whatever we can do in our limited capacity, then you know we do it. But well, Chinese are selling plastic garlic, so you know, and plastic rice plastic rice and all of that. Um, I do believe that eventually one has to eat a much more lean, as for your guests, uh, have you heard of black seed oil? I have not. I have not heard of that. Black seed oil? Mm -hmm. yeah. Me either. No. It cures everything except that. <laughs> oh, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> black seed oil. Yes, yeah, look it up. You get it uh, in, in a lot of the Muslim areas that sells foods. It's a it's a middle it's an oil from Africa and Middle East. You should do the research. It's great for really correcting a lot of things in the body. Um, black seed oil, moringa um, tea, or moringa. Mm -hmm. I um, heard of moringa tea. Right. Um, that Maca. Maca, some of those things like moringa pulls things toxins out of your body. Um, but black seed oil is very good for a lot of maladies in the body. You can rub, even use it to rub for aches and pains. So um, I believe that people need to really f trust their gut and follow their intuition as far as when it comes to buying food and, and really, um, you know, researching things. I, it's Trader Joe's, all those places, they sound great, but, you know, I too question what they put in it. You know, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Because at the end of the day, if it's all if it's big business and it's big agriculture, big business, big profits, then do they really care if we're sick or if we're healthy? You know? Well someone just told me yesterday that um there's a pantry that's giving out food from Trader Joe's, um um no Whole Foods for free. It's on a Sunday uh, morning. And is a place that gives out these foods from Whole Foods for free of all different kinds. And this person says, oh, it's organic. Mm -hmm. Now, when they give giving out free food, sometimes I also question, when they say, what free government cheese? I always thought it was someone experimented with. Yeah, free isn't always free, right? And free is like the big lure. Oh, come get this. It's free. Ain't nothing free. Well, you know, it's all big business. I mean, they're making business money off of your ma off your illness for the pharmaceutical doc companies make money. The doctors get a kickback. Mm -hmm. So this, the system is not really 
um, designed to make you well. That's why some health, so-called health food storage products are so expensive. Mm -hmm. I agree. You can, you can get a sick stuff and get it cheaply. I agree. I agree. Because even getting back to the diabetes, and, and thank you for that. That was That's my co-host on the radio show, Najami Bushwoman! <laughs> <laughs> but um, even getting back to the diabetes, you know, if, if a lot of the foods are now promoting these illnesses, then you're going to find yourself on the operating table for one reason or another. I can't tell you how many people I see out there with walking canes or in wheelchairs for, for no reason. I mean, young people, when I say young people, I mean, 30 years old, early forties, 50 year olds. I mean, with walking stick. And then they're telling you, oh, I have a hip replacement or I had a knee replacement or, you know, some kind of replacement. Why? And then you have the, the, the people they're injecting themselves all the time because they, they have diabetes. Just be mindful, as Fox said before, be mindful of what you are ingesting and, and give it some time to digest. Yeah. But people don't do that. They sit in front of the TV and they just, I mean, I, I'm guilty of that too. I, I did a, yeah, I did a podcast and, and I, I showed where I ate a whole bag of Swedish fish. You know how much sugar that was? <laughs> a little more than a lot. Just, I was just putting it mindlessly. You know, I'm working and I'm mindlessly put it. That's crazy. But a lot of people do that. A lot of people. And I have. I've eaten an entire apple pie in one sitting. I mean, that's, that's, a whole pie. And a whole apple pie. And that's not so big, but you know, when you really consider all the sugars that are in there too. Yeah, hey, that's yeah. a lot. It is. That's it a is. lot. I'm 135 pounds. That's a lot of food. <laughs> Clear the balance. True, that's true. Does anyone else want to say anything? Thank you so much, Najami, for putting your voice in the space. Does anyone else want to say a few words, comments, suggestions, anything? There are quite a few people sitting here. Hi, this is Teresina. Hey, Teresina! Woo! -woo! <laughs> <laughs> Hi, lovey. How are you? We are fabulous. We are fabulous. Good evening to Wonderful. you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Fox, for coming on and being a guest tonight. You were so informative and just beautiful. So I'm going to have to check out your website and check out your podcast. I appreciate that. Um, well, thank you. So I have, oh. indeed, indeed, I have a comment, Marcia. I'm mm -hmm. one of those people. I am a type 2 diabetic and I was diagnosed probably, oh, wow, when I was like 38 years old after I had my big baby. They diagnosed me with diabetes. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm one of those people who I stick myself. Actually, I walk around with a pump on my hip that's just pumping insulin in my body every day. And I don't eat a lot of sugar. And I try to watch what I eat and what I drink. But whatever I put in my mouth makes my blood sugar go up, whether it's green or whether it's not green. Have, have you tried charcoal? Now I'm going to be like the charcoal commercial walking billboard because I am so serious about this charcoal. I remember when I watched this, um, it was one of those medieval Roman Catholic, you know, when Catholicism was a big reign and something mm -hmm. had happened to one of the protagonists in the show. And she's like, and the, the, the queen or the consort was saying, Give him, give him the charcoal, and they were putting all this charcoal in oh, yeah. into him. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, what is this charcoal? And it wasn't until I did this detox that I actually read the benefits of ingesting charcoal. You know, burn right. some wood and create the charcoal. But I guess you have to be mindful of which wood you're burning too. But you know, sure. just have the charcoal and and mix it with the um, alkaline water, and you drink that. You drink that at night when you're going to sleep. And in the morning, I'm telling you, your, your whole skin, your, your, your whole being just feels much lighter. It's like you meditated for like 50 hours. That's how light you feel. Oh. Yeah. Well, all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Seriously. And Najami spoke about the, the spices. So me, I've had this, uh, what they call exercise asthma. And I've had mm -hmm. that for years. And 
recently i've been using more um cinnamon in my mm -hmm. in my hot beverage whether it's tea or coffee and i'm telling you it's been about seven weeks now and i have not and i used to walk around with a pump albuterol mm. so if i'm gonna yeah. do my morning run or my morning jog i have to pump because if i don't then you know all that phlegm and everything that i can't breathe and you know the exercise asthma starts to agitate since i've been using the cinnamon one teaspoon of cinnamon in my beverage mm -hmm. i haven't had any use of the albuterol at yeah, the cinnamon, the cinnamon also helps to helps with the uh, regulation of our blood glucose. It helps with the regulation and it helps even more so with inflammation. A lot of diseases are caused by inflammation. You know, your aches, your pains, it's a lot of the inflammation. So mm -hmm. if you have sinus problems, it's because you have an inflammation in the nose and then it feels like, oh, I can't breathe and all this going on because of the inflammation. So what the cinnamon helps to do is to cut back on inflammation and it helps to decrease the mucus, um, mm. the mucus production. So I okay. know that aspect of it. And I think I gave a blurb, I forget where the hell I, I have put it, but it also <laughs> helps to, to re-regulate your glucose your glucose as well. So read it up. Cinnamon is like the the be all end all. But we we take a lot of things for granted. You know, we we just don't use the spices that we have. Nutmeg is good. Cinnamon is good. Uh, Najami mm -hmm. said, um, what she said, black seed oil, maca root. Those things are really good. Now, when they start making that shit in the lab, then you know, then we got a problem. <laughs> then you got a you said black 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 seed black B -L -A -C -K? seed oil. Yeah, B L A C K okay. seed oil. Black seed oil. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll check that out. I'll look it up. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your experience and your knowledge. I appreciate you. You're welcome, and thank you for coming on. Yay! Anytime. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness oh my goodness so fox are you having anything coming up pretty soon are you doing anything that you want to share with us yes so uh on let's see wednesday the wait, wait, we're still on okay so today yeah. is today is the what the 14th so on the 16th of uh -huh. this month may i will be speaking on the Public Speakers Association Virtual Summit with, with Tanya Hoffman yes. and the, at 4.30 uh, p.m. Eastern Time. And the topic, Marcia, is in bloom. So In bloom. In bloom. So I'm saying in spite of life's events that, that, that do happen sometimes, choose to bloom. So I'm going to relay some of my experiences, mm -hmm. some of my obstacles, some obstacles of others that I know and ways we can overcome them. And of course, I will always uh, drop a few poems from the book with, with, with what I say about how I would recommend attacking obstacles. And it does begin, as you know, with a mindset. Choose victory and you will get it. 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time this Wednesday, uh, the virtual summit brought to you by the Public Speakers Association. Is so, there a link that goes with that where people could click on, yeah. sign on? Yes. So all of that information is on my website. Okay. Again, that is foxbuyer.com, F-O-X-B-E-Y-E-R.com. You go to the, uh, the very bottom of the, of the, of the home page. It gives you all the information. It gives you the number to call. Uh, please call in and ask questions. If you find me on Facebook, it's Fox Buyer, and I, I will be doing that summit also through Facebook Live. So two ways to get to me, through that number, or if you just want to uh, follow me on Facebook and then watch it through Facebook Live, I'll be right here. And as I said before earlier, I will be sharing the screen so that you can see his information 
so that it's easy to connect with Fox. This is this is the man that you need to connect with. Yes, Fox Bear, fearless, fearless. Yes, okay. he didn't tell about his coaching skills, but you know we'll save that for next time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I like it. I like it. I, think I just got roasted. <laughs> roasted. And this weekend, I will be in the Philadelphia area hosting champagne and chocolate conversations. Yes, we're going to be talking about adult conversations. It's going to be about sex, and it's going to be at the Hidden River at 3901 Main Street, Suite 201 in Manor Young in Pennsylvania. So come on down. You know someone in the Philly area? Tell them about this. Come on down and, you know, let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. So I'm so happy that everyone was able to kind of touch base and chat with us tonight. Our next show for the Speaker MC show is on May 28th. And, you know, I didn't realize that it was the freaking holiday, but hey, we are <laughs> going to have a show and it's going to be woman to woman talking about female empowerment. And those two guests are really going to let you know about, yeah, are we really empowering women or are we just saying so? Are we walking the walk and talking the talk or are we just talking all kinds of crap? <laughs> oh, so thank you all for joining us tonight. And I swear, I hope that you had some fun and you got some value from this conversation about big food because this is nothing to sneeze at. It really impacts us on a daily, daily basis. And in closing, I love, love, love my mentor from far away, RIP Maya, RIP Maya Angelo. Maya always says, I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. And I hope that we have made you feel warm, fuzzy, and tingly inside tonight with some valuable information about food and what you can do as your next action steps. And I'm so happy for our guest, Fox Bayer, for joining us tonight. So saddened that Margaret, Margaret Babb from Nature Sure, wasn't able to get on in but this is her information. Please connect with her. She is the CEO of NatureSure, and it's www.naturesurepcp.com. And Fox is foxbayer.com, and you can get him at foxbayer at gmail.com. So check out his website for that upcoming May 16th at 4.30 in bloom with the virtual summit presented by Public Speakers Association. Yes, my Speakers Bureau, woo -hoo -hoo! Yes, yes. Go Fox, go Fox. <laughs> and don't forget to check me out on Saturday, that's this coming Saturday, May 19th in the Philadelphia area for some champagne and chocolate conversations. So thank you all for joining us tonight. Hope to see you soon. And mwah, good night. Good night. Fox, thank you so much, Fox. I am so truly honored that you are here tonight. And I hope that you had as much fun as we had. I think I may have had more fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And good night, everyone.